Stonehenge, transportation of Welsh stones discussed by experts sign up for for latest news plus tips to save money and the environment subscribe when you subscribe we will use the information you provide to send you these newsletters sometimes they'll include recommendations for other related newsletters or services our privacy notice explains more about how we use your data and your rights you can unsubscribe at any experts put forward a new theory on the ancient monument during BBC 2 Stonehenge, the Lost Circle revealed documentary. They now believe a dismantled stone circle at Wine Mon, in the Priestley Hills of West Wales, is likely to have been used as the original building blocks for the site that stands today in Salisbury, Wiltshire. Excavations and analysis of the site led by Professor Mike Parker Pearson of University College London dated the stone circle to around 3400 BC and found several of the monoliths are of the same rock type and one of the blue stones at Stonehenge matches a whole left but their find could also challenge long-held views that our Neolithic ancestors transported the stones along a number of speaking during the documentary. Professor Parker Pearson said, There's been a lot of support for the sea trans. The difficulty is that, at 3000 BC, we don't think they had particularly sturdy boats that could hold these multi ton stones, two or three. It's a very risky project indeed to maneuver a large megalith over water. It was tried in 2000, a millennium project, the stones sank within half a mile of leaving land. Professor Pearson's discovery was made on the northern slopes of the Priestley Hills, reigniting support for an alternative theory that it would have been easier to travel. Professor Parker Pearson explained, I think there's a much more plausible possibility that they took those stones as far as they could by land. There's a much more feasible land route from the north side, going around the Priestley and then picking up the natural routeways that have been formed by the system of valleys in South Wales. It's actually the route taken by the modern A40 today. Trending the series went on to explain how this theory was put into practice. The narrator explained, dragging these stones, each the size and weight of a small car, almost 150 miles, seems a staggering feat for Stone Age. James Dilley and Luke Winter are experimental archaeologists. They create and construct using materials and techniques available to Stone Age people. Here, at the Ancient Technology Center, they are experimenting with whether the blue stones could have been transported on a wooden sled. Incredibly, the experiment seemed to prove the theory. Mr. Winter told viewers, so we just pulled 5 tons by 30 13-year-olds who went 35, 40 meters up the slope, it's up an incline. I think it really shows this theory works. You can pull a heavy weight on a sledge on raw ground without the need for huge timber arrangements and sleeper trackways or rollers. Experts now theorize that the stones used for Stonehenge were transported by the Neolithic civilization to become Britain's first monument to unification in 3000 BC. Radiocarbon dating previously suggested the structure was second-hand and its smaller blue stones stood for four centuries in another location after being quarried in South Wales. Professor Parker Pearson believes people were moving eastward and bringing their cultural crown jewels with them from ancestral homelands and Wymon is now being tipped as the original monument because it lies next to quarries where Stonehenge's smaller blue stones originate, its perimeter ditch has the same diameter and is also aligned with the midsummer solstice. Archaeologists believe this could explain why the blue stones used at Stonehenge were brought from so far away, while most circles are usually constructed within a short distance of Thank you.